Oh, I got ding dong. I really cut off the notification. People joining. Well, I can't have gone back to church, huh? <laughs> Just haven't opened yet, I'm in there. Right? I can't went in, went in illegally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Diva, your position very good. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Leung Chong Sui is joining us Zoom. Let's see. Her. So good, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Wesley Methodist Church Alosta Online Worship Service. Uh, we would like to welcome, especially for those who are following us through uh, YouTube. Just a reminder to all of us, we will be observing Holy Communion. Uh, to, get the good, to get the elements ready as we participate the Holy Communion together afterwards. So we are starting our worship service now and Dr. Choi will be leading us in call to worship and opening prayer. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this evening's Holy Communion service. Let us enter into God's presence with praise and thanksgiving. For he is good, his unfailing love endures forever. Let us go to call to worship taken from Psalms 148, 1 to 5. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens. 
and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. Let us go to the opening prayer. Let us pray together. God of power and might, your majesty is greater than the highest mountain. Your glory more radiant than the summer sun. As the days grow dark and the sun's light wanes, warm our hearts with the radiance of your love, that we might find our courage and walk by the light of the moon. As nations rise up against nations, strengthen our desire for peace in your name, that we might beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Amen. Thank you. Now we will go into a time of praise and worship led by our pastor. serve a great God, a living God, and a faithful God. So in times of difficulties, we can count on Him. He will help us to sail through. Amen. Let us sing together this song to worship our God. Ascribe greatness. Good and upright. 
light is here. Good and upright is here. Our God is sovereign. He's in control of world history. He's in control of our lives. He's in control of our in and out. Trust the Lord. First kingdom is here. His rule is here. This kingdom. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. The Son of Man, the Son of God, His kingdom come. Redemption sacrifice Now glorify Now testify His kingdom come And His kingdom burn on no end And His glory shall no We thank our pastor for leading us in the time of worship. So now we will go into a time of intercession. Our sister Pelan will lead us in the intercession. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. First, we are prayer of repentance and deliverance from the coronavirus. Our Father in heaven, we stand in the gap and humbly ask you to deliver us from this third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic and from the ambition of politicians bent on power grabbing, even if that results in destroying the nation. Forgive us for lack of visible unity in Christ. Forgive us for our selfish ambition and conceit, building our own kingdom and empires on earth 
and our self-righteousness and our lack of humility, always striving to our own interests and caring less about the interests of others. Forgive us of our apathy towards those impacted adversely in this pandemic. Forgive us also for our lack of compassion and action towards those suffering as a result of this turmoil brought about by the pandemic. The poor, the sick, the aged, the disabled, the migrants and refugees, the jobless, the aging and the prisoners. Forgive us for our lack of faith in believing that you are able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. We repent of our lack of perseverance in prayer and in pursuing in the knowledge of your word. We repent of our fear to preach the gospel boldly to all peoples who are in desperate need to hear of your gospel of salvation and to show them sacrificial love. We declare, O oh Lord, your peace and healing over our nation. For you are our Prince of Peace and our Jehovah Rapha. We declare and decree that your kingdom come, your will be done over our nation, so that all peoples may be blessed with your truth, righteousness, justice, and peace reigning over Malaysia. Lord, you say that if your people who are called by your name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you will turn your face towards us, forgive us our sins and heal our land. O oh Lord, please forgive us of our sins, for our attitudes and of wickedness, self-righteousness, idolatry, apathy and hate. Please come and heal our land. Restore us, O oh God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and empower us to be a holy people called by your name who choose to turn away from our sins. We ask for your mercy and grace and gratefully receive your forgiveness in Christ. Now let us pray for truth, righteousness and justice to prevail. Father, we declare your truth, righteousness and justice to reign over our country, for it is by your sovereign hand that this government has been allowed to be put in place. You have told us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, to pray for our nation. So we pray for your word to reign in every corridor of power and lawmaking, from the rulers to the parliament, to the judiciary and to the government. Lord God, we want to see you, you glorified in our nation because righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. We pray that you will intervene during this time, renewed, con renewed uh, confusion and power-grabbing endeavors. We ask for your wisdom and strength over the Council of Rulers, the Federal Cabinet and all branches of government of the nation at all levels, national, state and local. We pray for our politicians to put the interests of the people ahead of the politicking. We pray that all politicking will cease in the name of Jesus and we continue to lift up the health of our Prime Minister into your keeping hands. We pray for our Prime Minister to demonstrate exercising his authority rightly and place competent candidates to work and not be swayed by political threats by his coalition partners. We ask that your hand will be upon the politicians to bring about cleansed hearts, sincere motives, humility, and good conscience, to genuinely serve the rakyat with competence and integrity of heart. We pray that our ministers will discharge their duties and responsibilities sincerely in the fear of God. We continue to pray that all political posturing and selfish ambitions shall be thwarted so as not to shortchange the interests and welfare of the people of this nation. We continue to persevere in prayer over the hidden plotting to scuttle high-profile corruption cases in exchange for political power. We ask that your justice will prevail and those 
bent on manipulating justice for personal gains will be swiftly dealt with. We humbly ask you to intervene and overrule through your sovereign authority over the affairs of men. We pray for our peoples to be discerning, honest, and righteous, who know how to wish, how to weigh right from wrong, not be deceived by religious and racial nationalism and other forms of political propaganda and ideological deceptions which would destroy our nation. We pray for spiritual breakthroughs in the present political strife and impasses. Lord Jesus, shine your light into the concealed darkness in Malaysia. Expose that which is hidden and cause human darkness and demonic agents to fail and flee at your powerful name. Lord Jesus, we ask for the demolishing of strongholds in the unseen realm of demon activities, secret plotting and witchcraft. We pray that the intensifying efforts of the evil principalities and powers in striving and stoking this unity, corruption and deception and plotting unholy alliances will all fail in the name of Jesus, that they will tremble and flee in fear of your name. Cleanse the spiritual atmosphere over our land in Christ's mighty name, for you alone can dispel darkness in the unseen realms of principalities and powers and bring light and hope to our nation. We rejoice in knowing that you are continuing to work out your purposes in our nation. For your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. We ask that the reality of thy kingdom come will be fully felt in this beloved nation of ours. Help us not to feel embittered, defeated and apathetic or be tempted to only look to political chariots and horses solutions. Help us to look to you first to deliver us from evil men. For you have said, vengeance is mine. Final justice belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and pray. Amen. So once again, we would like to Welcome all of us to our worship service. <laughs> we are thankful we are able to worship together as a church, whether through Zoom or YouTube in this time of a pandemic. Let us start with the memory verses for the month of November. The emphasis for this one is Jesus, giver of peace. And we will memorize these two verses from John chapter 14 verse 27 and John chapter 16 verse 33. Let us read these two verses together. John 14 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in you, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now let us look into the church family news. If you and your loved one needs prayer support, please contact the pastor and the leaders listed below. Our pastor is always available. If you need support and prayer, please contact our pastor or leaders through WhatsApp or phone, phone call as we continue to observe social distancing in this RMCO period. So we will continue to hold our worship service through Zoom and YouTube for the month of uh, November. Remember that our church worship service on Saturday uh, 7 of November, 8 p.m. for Chinese uh, Chinese congregation via YouTube, and Sunday, 8 of November, 8 p.m. English congregation 
via Zoom and YouTube. So as we worship God with our tithes and offering, let us continue to give our tithes and offering through online uh, internet banking. So below are the details of the church account. The bank is CIMB Bank and the name of the account is Wesley Methodist Church. Account number 800-640-7276. After we have done the online offering, please email or WhatsApp the receipt to Ms. Bok Kim Ping at the telephone number 017-490-9388 or email to kpbok388 at hotmail.com. Please state your name and purpose of the offering. If we are not able to do online banking, do contact our pastor if you, if you wish to give in person. Our, our pastor will arrange or make arrangement for the tithes to be collected and passed to the church. Do consider to give to Christian Care Fund as we have been, we always been doing and we observe the Holy Communion during the in-person worship service. As the needs of the poor and needy are more critical in this time of pandemic, the church has been actively giving support to various organizations such as Track Disaster Relief, the MCRD, and many needy individuals among our community, totaling more than 8,000 ringgit. So do consider giving as we need the funds to continue supporting those in needs. So continue to stay safe by observing the three W, wash, wear and warn and avoid the three C's, crowded places, confined and closed conversation. Continue to stay connected and with God and one another. Now we have a scripture reading. We invite Sister Kamling to read us the word of the Lord tonight. Good evening. Today's scripture reading is taken from Amos chapters 7 and 9. Let us read God's word together. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. He was preparing swarms of locusts after the king's share had been harvested and just as the late crops were coming up. When they had stripped the land clean, I cried out, Sovereign Lord, forgive. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This will not happen, the Lord said. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. The Sovereign Lord was calling for judgment by fire. It dried up the great deep and devoured the land. Then I cried out, Sovereign Lord, I beg you, stop. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This will not happen either, the Sovereign Lord said. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words. For this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer, go back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy anymore at Bethel, because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. But I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people, Israel. Now then, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel, 
and stop preaching against the descendants of Isaac. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will become a prostitute in the city and your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be measured and divided up and you yourself will die in the pagan country and Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. Chapter 9. I saw the Lord standing by the altar and he said, Strike the tops of the pillars so that the thresholds shake. Bring them down on the heads of all the people. Those who are left, I will kill with the sword. No one will get away. None will escape. Though they dig down to the depths below, from there my hand will take them. Though they climb up to the heavens above, from there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves on the top of Carmel, there I will hunt them down and seize them. Though they hide from my eyes at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent to bite them. Though they are driven into exile by their enemies, there I will command the sword to slay them. I will keep my eye on them for harm and not for good. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, he touches the earth and it melts. And all who live in it mourn. The whole land rises like the Nile, then sinks like the river of Egypt. He builds his lofty palace in the heavens and sets its foundation on the earth. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land. The Lord is his name. Are you not Israelites the same to me as the Cushites? declares the Lord. Did I not bring Israel up from Egypt, the Philistines from Captor and the Arameans from Kir? Surely the eyes of the sovereign Lord are on the sinful kingdom. I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Yet I will not totally destroy the descendants of Jacob, declares the Lord. For I will give the command and I will shake the people of Israel among all the nations as grain is shaken in a sieve, and not a pebble will reach the ground. And all, all the sinners among my people will die by the sword. All those who say disaster will not overtake or meet us. In that day, I will restore David's fallen shelter. I will repair its broken walls and restore its ruins and will rebuild it as it used to be so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name, declares the Lord, who will do these things. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. And I will bring my people back. And I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for tonight, our pastor, Reverend Aaron Ng, will be preaching to us the title, Make David Both Great Again. May all of us be blessed by tonight's message. Okay, dear brothers and sisters, peace to you, huh? brothers and sisters on Zoom, and also to brothers and friends on YouTube. Indeed, I'm so glad and I feel so blessed to see uh, you worshipping together online. Yeah, I know that all of you also worship God every day, pray to Him. But it's so different now compared to worshipping uh, in a corporate worship that we come to worship Him. Okay. Hmm. Who has not uh, mute yourself? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I also pray that God's hand continue to protect you, brothers and sisters, uh, from this um, the pandemic, from this viral uh, infection. That will continue our in and out, will be healthy, and if, uh, God's hand upon us. Today, uh, I'm going to preach this message Make David's booth great again. Huh? So I borrow somebody's <laughs> popular word, great again. Huh? Amos chapter 7 to chapter 9. Huh? Because too long, we only read uh, seven, chapter 7 and chapter 8 just now. The book Amos is divided into three last large sections, uh, three parts. 
And the last section is chapter seven to nine that uh, we cover uh, this evening, this time. We already preached two sermons uh, to, for first section and second sections. Prophet Amos is a uh, sixth century before Christ prophet. So it's, it was about the time of uh, Socrates, about the time of uh, Confucius, you know. So we couldn't hear how God want to tell us a message through this uh, prophet sixth century before Christ. The last section that we cover today contains five prophetic oracles, prophetic messages based on visions, uh, visions. Prophet also see visions. On. Mm. The first vision was the vision of uh, locust, verse one to three, chapter seven. Amos saw that all the crops were devoured by locusts. So in that time, great swarms of locusts theoretically invaded these lands, typically in times of drought. So that was common to that land, Palestine, but not common to us in Alastair, correct? Not? We, we hardly see locusts right now. And the first harvest actually went to the king as tax. That means when they harvested, they, this first harvest was supposed to give to the kings. Whereas the subsequent harvest of the main crop fed the farmer and his family. So later only you receive that as your, your, for your family. Amos, as we read just now, he saw this plague of locusts coming to attack after the king's share was harvested. So this share attacked by the locusts supposed to belong to the family. All these crops were supposed to be consumed by the people, but God sent locusts to eat them up. So it would cause a terrible famine. No food. By the way, now we're also afraid that we have a food crisis in this world at this time now. Probably some of you, many of you are not aware. But thank God, we, Malaysia, we produce also quite enough food now. The second vision was the coming of fire. Yeah, in the modern days, I think of, I went to Australia before, we, we, I encountered this uh, bushfire or wildfire. The fire symbolized uh, oppressive heat and drought. It could be the sun was shining right overhead and it dried up the great deep, you know, great deep water, dried up and devoured the land, causing no water to irrigate the fields. So can you imagine no water in Alastair to irrigate our uh, paddy field? Both the plague of locusts or the disaster caused by the hot scorching sun, both were realities that would possibly happen. The prophet cried out to God after seeing these two visions. Oh Lord God, please cease. Stop it. How can Jacob, talking about the northern kingdom Israel, how can Jacob stand? Because he is so small. So, my sister, we also pray for Malaysia now. We also pray for our church, the BMC, huh? after the, this seven months of pandemic. I also pray, oh Lord, our church is small. How can we stand, Lord? Please stop. Help us. Deliver us. Israel was indeed small, you know. The population base of the kingdom was not large enough to survive such radical depletion. Attacked by the fire, attacked by the locusts. The Lord, Yahweh, relented concerning this. After he had a prayer, he relented, you know. He said, this ocean shall not be, said the Lord God. So God sometimes you're so fun, you know. Tak pusing balik, you know. U-turn, you know. <laughs> sometimes he U-turn, you know. As prophet also, he pronounced the judgment, then he prayed. Then God U-turn. Uh, Amos actually knew how sinful Israelites were. But when he saw that God had put these two grave disasters upon the Israelites, he never felt overjoyed with it. He won't say he never felt overjoyed. Instead, he cried out earnestly to God for mercy. As a result, God changed his mind and the disaster will be hell. Right, sisters, do we have such a big heart like the prophet when we encounter this kind of circumstances? When we see that this guy, the bad guy, the bad people deserve annihilation, deserve judgment. We see in this world many wicked men who stubbornly refuse to change after many rounds of admonishment. Many rounds ask him to change, but he repeat the same thing. Even he got old already, or in the old age, he still repeat the same mistake. 
the evil politicians, the oppressive nations. For example, brothers and sisters, do we eagerly hope for the punishment and can't wait to see them demolished by divine plagues? Divine plagues from God to demolish them? Or like Prophet Amos, do we lovingly seek for God's forgiveness upon this type of wicked people and wicked nations? As Amos' uh, reaction tells us, we must practice a big heart of Amos if we were to evangelize people. Tell them about God's love and so that they can come back to God. All unbelievers are those whom we should love. Amos' prayers should remind us to pray for our nations and our unbelieving friends and relatives. Continue to pray for them. Continue to evangelize them. God still offer them opportunities time and again to keep them away from judgment. God can also do you turn. The first and second visions, locust and the fire, were real life natural disasters. But the third one now, actually we total, we're talking about five visions. Now to come to the third and the fourth visions were some symbolic scenes only. The third vision was a vision of plumb line. You know. It's quite interesting. You know. Those who are doing building, I think my father using this, I saw him 40, 50 years ago, the carpenter. They're using this. The prophet saw a wall that was built by the measurement of a plumb line. A plumb line is a device used to ensure the straightness of a wall. A wall that is not straight will eventually collapse. God wants his people to be right with him, to be straight, not crooked. He wants the sin that makes his people crook be removed immediately. That's the purpose he showed this plumb line. Verse seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 8, the Lord said, Look, I'm setting a plumb line among my people, Israel. I will spare them no longer. See? Let me explain further. God's word, his law and his commandments. All of us know, even the Israelites also knew from uh, the law of Moses, it's the plumb line that helped his people to be aware of their sin. By reading this book, the Bible, they know God's heart, they know God's law. So, they know God's commandment. This is the plumb line. God's punishment would come upon the Israelites because they failed to reach up to God's measurement, fail to measure up. Today, how do we measure up to God's plumb line? Yeah, we are. The, we have received salvation through Christ, as we believe. But God's heart, God's commandment actually still made known to us, brothers and sisters. So we also ask this question, are we measure up to God's plumb line? The fourth vision was the vision of summer fruits, you know. Rock fruits or summer fruits. Sok jo, uh, sudah, uh, sudah matang. Uh. The, matang already, uh. the prophet saw a basket of ripe fruits and God says, this, the time is right, R-I-P-E, right, for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. Again, he said, I will spare them no longer. Then following the, the following verse, chapter 8, 5 to 14, narrated the sin and judgment and the end of Israelites. We didn't read just now very long list. The prophets respond to us these two later visions uh, about the plum line and the ripe food, the summer fruits. How did um, Amos respond? Actually, his response was totally different from his response to the former two visions. He did not plead God after seeing the third and the fourth vision. He did not plead God. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Huh? Sometimes we think that we need to be a nice person. We always have the, the underdog. Huh? We always go all out but to help the person. But this time, Prophet Amos, he stopped pleading. Was he discouraged? What, had he stopped loving the Israelites? <laughs> he didn't love the Israelites anymore? No, it was because he came to realize God's heartbeat. He knew God's will already. He shared the habit of God. He was willing to submit 
to God's works. Amos came to understand that God had indeed given the Israelites and Bhutan, Enatan, many rounds, many opportunities to repent. When Amos knew that God would not spare them, he understood what he meant. He came to comprehend the heartbeat of God. Actually, this is some, uh, a good parallel is Abraham prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah. He prayed from 50 people, reduced to 40 to 30 to 10 righteous people. If I find 10 righteous people, you will not demolish this Sodom and Gomorrah. God said, yes. After that, 10 people cannot find. Then he, he didn't ask for, how about five? <laughs> how about two? He stopped at 10. So uh, more or less the same thing. After the prophet had mentioned about the third vision of the plumb line, actually, uh, the narration, the story, the was interjected, something interjected by a dialogue between Amos and the Israel priest, Amos Ayer. Uh, this interjection served to make known to the readers like us the specific reason why Israel were punished by God, no longer spare. Why? So that what make this interjection, a dialogue between Amos Ayer, the priest of Israel, and Amos actually make this book Amos more interesting than other books. So then he talked about how this prophet Amos talked to the person, Amaziah. Chapter 7, verse 10 says, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel. He said, send to Jeroboam, the king of Israel, saying, yeah, bring down to king. Huh? Amos, this prophet from the south, has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. Wow. So any politics come in, you know. No more purely religious. Uh, the land is not able to bear all his words. Uh, sedition. Uh, there's some kind of accuse him of sedition. For Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword and Israel must go into exile away from his land. So he said, actually, Amos attacking the royal family, you know, attacking Jeroboam. Amos was calling the people to repentance, but Amos I had charged him with sedition by reporting him to the king. So to be prophet uh, were quite dangerous. Uh, can be charged with sedition by this Amos I, uh, your enemies. Prophets like Amos was were all often seen as traitors and conspirators because they spoke out against the king and his advisors questioning their authority and exposing their sin. So in a way, I also thank God. Uh, now this pastor, we don't do the kind of ministry. Uh. <laughs> uh, we go directly, we stand up against the king. But within our rights and given a platform as a pastor, we also voice up against injustice happening in the country. The kings often saw the prophet as enemies, you know in the Israel time, rather than as God's spokesmen who were really trying to help them and help the nation. Amos was trying to help them, but the king see them as enemies. So here was a priest. Interestingly, we see a picture, a priest using the regime, the government, the political uh, power to oppress a prophet who spoke God's word. Interesting. Uh, the prophet actually ministering. God called him to minister and the priest also minister to the people. You know? by helping in everyday running of the temple, of the offering of sacrifice. Why did Amaziah react this way? Uh, we can ask the question. Ah, actually he explained. Chapter 7, verse 12 to 13. Amaziah said to Amos, you know, you Osir, sentient Osir means uh, also prophet. Uh, they mean you see before something, one, you always see vision. Man. You go, flee away to the land of Judah. Their hometown, you come from Judah. Return to your land and eat bread there. Uh, it mentioned quite politely, actually, in today's language, means you cari makan sana. Lah. You don't come here and cari makan. No? They, they want to say, hey, go, to one go back to your hometown, one second. Eat bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel here in the northern Israel, for it is the king's sanctuary and is the temple of the kingdom. Amaziah was the chief priest in Bethel, uh, representing Israel's official religion. Although at the same time, they also have worship idols. Uh, they have uh, this hybrid religion. Uh, 
But official religions, they worship Yahweh also. He assumed that the supposedly backward Judean uh, from the south would appreciate Amos' words. You better go back to prophesy there. Uh, and that Amos was looking to be paid for his preaching. You think here you come and cari makan. Uh, no. Please we go. Flee. Go back to your hometown, Judah. According to Amaziah, the urban and sophisticated Israelites did not appreciate the prophet. We don't need you here. I'm here. It's good enough already, Amaziah. Amaziah's loyalties were clearly to the throne. Yeah, he really cari makan on this guy, oh, because he served the king. He wanted to keep the king happy in order to keep his job. He was not concerned about hearing God's message. He was only worried about his own position. Brothers and sisters, don't let your desire for prestige, authority, or money keep you tied to a job or position that you should live. Why Amaziah was there, he really craved for the money, for the position. So he also see this, saw Amos as some challenging his position. Brothers and sisters, don't let anything come between you and obeying God. So if you think that you keep to that position, that displeases God, go against our faith, please leave the position. As we continue, then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, no, he, uh, quite interestingly, he said, uh, uh, he is quite colorful, colorful prophet. He said, I was not a prophet, no, nor a prophet's son. That means what? That means I'm not an ordained pastor. La. I also never from seminary. <laughs> prophet son means trained by a prophet la, in the prophet school. They, they, they have a prophet school in the Old Testament. Uh, this, uh, uh, Samuel was a prophet school teacher. La. He said, I was not a prophet. No, a prophet's son, you know. I think I'm, I'm like other prophet. I said, no, I was a herdsman and dresser of sycamore fixed tree, you know. He do hairdressing of the tree. Uh, trim the tree, uh, trim the tree. Uh, dressing the tree. So some Bible scholars say, he say, uh, in today's term, he's a professional, you know. He's a professional. He got herdsman, he's not a shepherd, you know. The Hebrew word is a herdsman, that means he got plenty of flocks. Uh, but the Lord, took me from following the flock. He said, stop. Stop your clinic. <laughs> stop practicing as a doctor. Come. The Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people in Israel. So he left his, his all, the, all his businesses and profession. Amos was not a professional prophet and even a disciple in training. He had no financial incentive to live his livelihood in order to prophesy. Actually, he lost money, you know. He... he, he, he he abandoned all these things, then he went to the north to prophesy. He was not motivated by financial gain. Instead, the Lord's voice moved him to prophesy. So I pray our brothers and sisters, uh, the great MC, we also will produce one day the even more uh, seminary students, pastors, missionaries going to the field uh, as God called us. Without any special preparation, education, or upbringing, uh, it was quite a unique case uh, in Old Testament uh, in Amos' case. He, he, he didn't have so much of uh, education, training, upbringing. Amos obeyed God's call to go and prophesy to the people in Israel. And Amos sacrificed his handsome secular job income for being a prophet. Yeah. Obedience is the test of a faithful servant of God. Are you obeying God's call to you, grand sisters? God may call you into a ministry, certain ministry, it may be pastoral ministry. It may be other form of ministry. God wants you to be obedient to him. I say it again, obedience is the test of a faithful servant of God. Since Amaziah had tried to silence Amos, don't allow him to prophesy, chase him out. Uh, just imagine a, 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 somebody come to the church and preach, I chase him out. <laughs> uh, this is chase him out. Then the Lord confronted him, you know, confronted this Amaziah. God confronted him with a grim prophecy in uh, chapter 7, 16 to 17. He said, now therefore hear the word of the Lord. Of course, uh, conveyed by Amos. Uh, Since you say that, you chase me out. Uh, now I tell you, you say, do not prophesy against Israel and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wives shall be a prostitute in the city and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword and your land shall be divided up with a measuring line. 
you yourself shall die in an unclean land. That means exile to the unclean land, uh, to Assyria. No? They were exiled to Assyria. And die there. You, you forget about what? Amaziah. And Israel shall surely go into exile away from this land. So God pronounced this punishment to Israel and also to Amaziah. The Israelites, same time and again, which culminated in Israel's destruction. Because what? That's the reason. Because they refused to take heed of the word of God. They refused to listen to Moethe. Huh? They chased out the prophet, silenced his word. Uh, nowadays, media also can silence some, people, some people's word. Huh? When the media don't report, huh? uh, they silence somebody's word. God was so angry. They tuned the volume of the voice of God to the lowest. But they tuned the voices of their own heart desire and worldly views, the views from the world, to the maximum volume. This is a great scene. Huh? Chapter 8, 11 also indicates this. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread, no. Oh. But what? Nor a thirst for water, no. Not famine of bread or water, but hearing the words of the Lord. There may no more words for you. So interestingly, uh, this, Amos, uh, this book Amos mentioned of this interesting concept, a famine of the word. You know. No more word. So we really pray God. God help our church, uh, spare our sins, that our church here, that we, community of faith, always have the word of God. Amen. Yeah. If Can you imagine if the community or the church, no more word of God coming to them, a famine of word, what will become? The church will decline. People will leave their faith. They'll be destroyed. The Israelites had no appetite for God's word when Amos brought it to them because of their apathy, uh, apathy to you. Uh. God said he would take away even the opportunity to hear his word. There are many disasters now. Now come back to now. Government high officials are corrupted. Not only our countries, many other countries. Quite a phenomenon. Even Christians are succumbing, uh, succumb to the voice of this world. By the voice of secularism, politically correct. Secularism, but the secular cherish. The Christian is also affected. The political correctness, all these other voices, the norms of the world. And do not listen to God's word. Instead, listen to the world. Many still look everywhere for answer to life's problem, except in the scripture. Thank God we have God's word. The Bible with us, brothers and sisters. Huh? We have pastor preaching the word. We have brothers and sisters also preaching the word. God's word is available to us. The Lord Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. It's only those who live by the words of God will be able to be fed spiritually. It's an unchanging truth forever. So our son hog fish are actually uh, so inferior to God's word. <laughs> we are some, we are fed by the God's word, not really the luxurious food that we have. Let's turn to the Bibles for answer and help in our predicament, my sisters. In our everyday life, turn to the Bible. Take God's word seriously. Let us also help others to know the Bible before a time comes when we cannot find it. Maybe. The last vision. We come to the last one. What's the vision of the temple being smitten, uh, hit by God? You know? God hit his own temple, you know? Chapter 9, verse 1 to 10, the last vision. The vision was terrifying, agonizing to the heart, very really painful. The altar was the center of the entire temple, the center of worship. God stood there at the altar and said, strike the tops of the pillar. Why? So that the treasure shake, shatter them on the heads of all the people. God's temple, the church, collapse on the heads of all people. And those who are left of them, I will kill with the sword. Not one of them shall flee away. Not one of them shall escape. Chapter 9, verse 1. Talking about these Israelites. How God treated them. The Israelites were wrong to think that they could receive protection in the temple. No? Oh, you got protection. When you cling onto the temple, you'll be spared. No, judgment must begin at the center of worship. God would destroy 
the base of security in order to bring them to himself. So only two days ago, I read an article quite good. He said now, in a way that many things are destroyed for the church, for Christians, because we lost the in-person ministries. But if we see it in another angle, I think also God used that to bring us to him even closer. Amen? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, cling on to God in this time. Do not give up our faith. Do not give up our time of worshiping the Lord. Every day, do not give up our prayer time. So many things, maybe right now, we cannot comprehend. After some time, probably a few years later, you know that God destroyed many things actually to bring us to himself. No one can escape God's judgment, even if they were to dig down to the depths of below, uh, climb to the heavens above, they were not able to escape God's punishment. When people trust God, believe and obey God, his, God's presence is inescapi- inescapability. Can I escape God's presence? It's great blessing, you know. That means God's presence everywhere. If you obey him, it's great blessing to us. For it vindicates the righteous and brings a new earth of peace and prosperity. He will come and protect us, vindicate us. But because Israel rejected God's revelation, his presence would mean judgment, not comfort. God's presence with them, they cannot escape. But it was a presence of judgment, not comfort. Although God would severely punish Israel, now we come to the end, a comforting message. Although God comfort, uh, punished Israel, sorry, punished Israel by uprooting and scattering them, he would never completely destroy them, you know. Mentioned here, chapter 9, 8, a remnant would always exist. They mean not all vanish, not all die, a remnant. And even the Lord's most severe judgment is also just because only the sinners are destroyed and uh, not one true Kana will be lost. God will save the righteous who are faithful to him. Chapter 9, verse 9 to 10. So I thank God really his hand upon us, brothers and sisters, that I don't see any one of us in our community uh, stricken by this uh, COVID-19. So I really thank God. God wants to redeem, not punish. But when punishment is necessary, he does not withhold it. Like a loving father, God disciplines those he loves in order to correct them. That's how he did to the Israelites. If God disciplines you, accept it as a sign of his love. The concluding verse of Amos is related to the prophecy of future revival. So that uh, uh, really pertaining to us, uh, relevant to us. Uh, chapter 9, 11 to 12. He said, in that day, the end days, are uh, the end times, are uh, in that day. I will raise up the booth of David, uh, the shelter of David or the booth of David. That is fallen and repair its bridges. Repair the bridges, you know. Put in the new new branches. Uh. Uh, Paul said, uh, put in the new branches. The Gentiles, the Gentiles believers, raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Uh, even can reign over Edom. And all the nations who are called by my name declares the Lord who does this. So this is talking about an era when Christ come. Huh? Christ come as a savior. He will call all nations, different tribes, different tongues. The people will turn to him. From the punishment, the house of David was reduced to a fallen booth. However, God's covenant with David stated that one of David's descendants would always sit on the throne in 2 Samuel chapter 7, the Vedic covenant. The exile to Assyria, to Babylon, made this promise seem impossible. The country already captured, conquered, and the people, the royal family also exiled. But in that day, in the end times, now we know, talking about the arrival of Christ, God would raise up David's fallen booth, making the kingdom great again. This was a promise to both Israel and Judah, not to be fulfilled by an earthly political ruler, but fulfilled by the Messiah, who would renew the spiritual kingdom and rule 
forever. Thank God. We are the citizens of God's the Messiah kingdom now. They may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name actually envisions the messianic kingdom, which will be universal. Um, cross over, uh, move away from Israel, the political Israel land, but now universal and includes the Gentiles like us. God's promise to Abraham in Genesis uh, that he and his descendants would be a blessing to all the people of the earth would come to pass. Yeah. As uh, Paul also mentioned this uh, in uh, Galatians. Uh, understand that those who have faith are children of Abraham. We have faith in Christ. We are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you, Abraham. Mentioned in Genesis chapter 12, chapter 15. All those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So the Holy Spirit give enlightened Paul to see what Christ accomplished, the salvation on the cross actually can relate to the Abrahamic promise that all nations be blessed by Abraham's descendants. As we now, we are blessed because we receive Christ. We are safe. We become the descendants of Abraham. This is a bit of a biblical theology now. The coming age would also restore the natural harmony lost in Eden, you know. And this is the last part of Amos. He's talking about the restoration of the whole, the universal restoration. Back to something like Eden, you know. Bring a new era of prosperity. Humans would once again live in harmony with God's creation. This prophecy informs us that God's ultimate desire is for men to repent and uh, return to Eden so as to enjoy all the good life given by him. How do you live today, brothers and sisters? Are you happy? Or not? Are you feeling very blessed? Yeah, we will go into eternity in, with God's presence in this new heaven and new earth. We will be very blessed because God wants us to enjoy a good life given by him. Mentioned in Amos 9, 13 to 15, Behold, the days are coming, uh, declares the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the ripper and the traders of ribs, him who so seed, when the mountains were drip sweet wine and all the hills were dissolved. Actually, this is mentioned about all the good things. Uh. So even as far back as the 6th century before Christ, already they envisioned of this new heaven and new earth, a restoration back to Eden. Maybe sometimes we only think that uh, Revelation talking about that, but actually in the Old Testament already talking about that because God's intention never changed in the Old Testament. And the New Testament never changed. That he wants us to return to him in his presence and enjoy good life. Come to conclusion, brothers and sisters. The Israelites of uh, Amos Day had lost sight of God's care and love for them. Uh, the rich were carefree and comfortable, refusing to do justice nor helping others in need. They observed their religious rituals. Yeah, they also they also go. Went to church, you know, they observed religious riches in hopes of appeasing God, but they did not truly love Him. Actually, for their own good, the things they would earn something from God. They did not truly love God. Amos announced God's warnings of destruction for their evil ways. We must not assume that going to church and being good uh, are good enough. You know? God expects our belief in Him to affect all areas of our conduct our mindset, our value, and to extend to all people and circumstances. That means our faith should, should influence in all the surroundings, all areas of life. We should let Amos' words inspire us to live faithfully according to God's desires. This is what Amos tells us. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord, for this time that you give us a time to ready sit down and go through the Amos, this 6th century BC prophet. He tells us to live faithfully as God's people, to exercise our faith, to insert our influence of our faith, Christian faith, to our surroundings. And we thank you, Lord, that this message also tells us about God's heart 
that he wants us to enjoy the good life in him ultimately. So to men, whatever we encounter now, Lord, that we have problems, we have difficulties in many ways in our career, in our workplace, in the church ministry because of this pandemic. But we know that you have the peace that given to us as you have overcome the world. That we can that means we can trust you. You also bring us along with you to overcome the world. We know that we will pass through these difficult times very soon. And we see your hands every day with us to deliver us, to protect us. And Lord, we want to shine for you. We want to serve you out of our uh, heart of truly loving you. Because you are our creator, you are our redeemer, and you place us here, you save us. Thank God. Indeed, you are an awesome God. We are so blessed to know you and to worship you and be saved by Christ's salvation on the cross. We commit our brothers and sisters into your hand. Help us, Lord, to cling on to you. That we will forever uh, find rest in, and salvation in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, uh, now we come to a time of... Uh, Holy Communion. Yeah, let us prepare our hearts and prepare the elements before us. Go to a time of Holy Communion to remember Christ's death on the cross to redeem us. Can you get ready the elements, the bread and the wine? Christ, our Lord, in minds to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So therefore, let us uh, confess our sin before God and one another. Let us bow our head with prayer, sinners' uh, confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, free us for joyful obedience. Yes, Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the night in which he, Christ, our Lord, gave himself up for us, he took bread. Give thanks to you, broke the bread, give it to his disciple and say, take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Christ, he took the cup, give thanks to you, to God, give it to his disciples and say, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, brothers and sisters, let us now hold this bread in our hand. This is the body of Christ that broken for us so that we can have life. Let us partake this bread, the body of Christ, together. Let us hold this cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for us. That he will wash away our sin, redeem us. The sinner redeem us. And let us partake this wine, this cup together. Let us bow our head in prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you die on the cross for us. You die our death pay the price of the sinners, the penalty of sin, so that we may have life, so that our sins be forgiven, so that we be reconciled to God. Oh Lord, you indeed, in many ways, we fail you, Lord. Yes, help us, Lord, to forgive our brothers and sisters because you have forgiven us. Yeah, we tend to see lots of shortcomings and faults of others, but Lord, help us also to be mindful of our own sins, our own Thoughts that we forgive others that as we partake this holy communion, we will know we are in one, one body because you have redeemed us, you place us here. 
as we are in your presence now, dwell in your presence. Because through these elements, the wine and the bread, your presence will be with us, O oh Lord. Your presence comes with blessings, comes with power of healings. Your presence comes with comfort and joy. Come to our brothers and sisters, that they may leave this service with joy and with comfort from the Lord. Because we don't rely on ourselves, we rely on the Holy Spirit, on Christ's presence in our lives. That we can move, we can go along through this period of pandemic and we will see the glory of God to be upon us. They must shine for you. Thank God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And sisters, uh, when it comes to the end of this uh, worship, I will pronounce God's blessing on you. Congregation, receive God's blessing. Go forth in faith and put on the armor of Christ's light. As the days grow short, and the sun's light wanes. We will shine for all the world to see. Go forth in love during this time of waiting and embrace the peace that passes all understanding. And as disciples of the Prince of Peace, beat your swords into plow shares and your spears into pruning hooks. Go with God. Amen. Right, dear my sisters, now you can unmute yourself. We have, uh, before you leave, we have a time of uh, uh, fellowship. Thank you for your participation in this online worship. Yeah, indeed, we're glad. Thank you, Pastor. And, uh, we still can meet together to worship God. Amen. Yeah. So, welcome, uh, Brother Cham. Huh? Cham, welcome. Uh, Yeah, I think we want to inform you all. Next week, we have a guest speaker, huh? Jason Fong. All right. Wow. Uh, you all remember him, huh? So I think he, he will appear differently on Zoom. Lah. I, I hope you will still be asking us questions. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope that he doesn't disappear from the screen because he is <laughs> all the time. <laughs> he might come so near to you, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Li Fan House Ipo. Okay. Good good news lah. We are getting our TMCO over already. Oh, is it? So you can go back to your uh house uh, with no problem now. Uh, I think tomorrow lah. Mm, okay. <laughs> Today last day, is it? I think I, good, good. they say lifted by second, I presume by uh, midnight. By midnight, midnight. Uh, mm. by mid midnight then. That's uh, good news. Yeah. Selengo, serious or Selengo? Selengo seems to be uh, still 200 cases. Actually, my house uh, belongs to Selengo, no? Sri Gambangan. Hmm. Oh, okay, okay. So your place also locked down? Ah? I don't know. Ask my wife. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She was saying she needs a letter. With uh, a letter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. Ah. Hi, Lily. How, how's the cases now? Uh, it seems today is quite uh, high, but uh, our area is okay. Hmm. Oh, Slango 225. Yeah, 225. PH area on Ken Ming, is it? MP. Is it the. Yeah, I think it's on Ming, right? Uh, Ao Yong. But I think Slango is a big state, you see. So. When maybe your area might not have many, but others might have, huh? But I think generally, don't you think it's I thought it's coming down a little bit? Generally, the trend. I'm not too sure because sometimes like yesterday it was down a bit, but today yeah. up again. So uh 
Do they up? Uh, I didn't see today. The result, right? oh, when they too. did the swab test, suddenly the result came out. Uh, so maybe uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The only good news is they claim on Twitter from the K yeah. MKN uh, that the R are not, not coming down. Come down it? Uh, from 2.2 to less than one they claim. Oh. So uh, much. That's what that's what is on Twitter. Lah. He said although we have 972 cases, but actually our uh, are not has uh, been reduced from 2.2 to 1. I don't know how they calculate that. Maybe because, because the budget... Because if below like, 1, then it's okay, right? Maybe budget coming out, so reduce the... Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> 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 or inside yeah. the trend also. You have uh, positive vibes, uh, so that people will support movie game. Right? <laughs> I hope they don't compromise. Uh. Mm. <laughs> this kind of 